Hello everyone, welcome to this material characterization course. In the last lecture, we have gone through some of the important operation controls of scanning electron microscopy and its effect on beam size and resolution and so on. And then in the last we discussed about very important aspect of the electron beam material interaction. And then we discussed about the concept about interaction volume and then we have gone through some of the Monte Carlo simulations based upon the etching experiments using low atomic number materials. I would like to continue from that uh, slides. If you look at this uh, schematic again, what you have seen is uh, the, the, the interaction volume for a 20 kilo volt beam striking a silicon as calculated numerically with a Monte Carlo electron trajectory simulations. So, it is very interesting to look at this, uh, the kind of electron trajectories you can see that with the dark line and as well as the, the very light line and you, it is going through a quite a bit of volume. You may be wondering that the, even though the electron probe size is in the order of few micrometer and if you look at this, the, the interaction volume is quite a bit in three dimension. Uh, few orders of magnitude more than what you have the dimension in the probe, probe size. So, we will just look at this, uh, uh, we have discussed about this, uh, the, the kind of voltage, uh, I mean the energy variation from the specimen surface to the interior of the material and I just mentioned that this contours, the energy contours uh, are generated based upon the, the etching experiment in terms of contours of energy deposited on the specimen as calculated with the Monte Carlo simulation based on the, the etching of using electron beam on the low atomic number material like polymethyl methacrylate kind of material. When the electron beam interacts with uh, such material, the molecular structure get damaged and how the damage occurs as a function of depth based on this, the energy is being calculated. And you may wonder that it, uh, the, if you look at the shape, it is, it is very interesting shapes like a a pear fruit kind of a shape and uh, there is some accountability you can give for this kind of a shape. It is suggested that though the, the electron beam to start with in the specimen surface, it is penetrating the material with a small uh, region, but eventually it just spread out into quite a bit of an area. So, this is explained in terms of as the, the beam enters the specimen, it has got a very high energy and then and it as it travel inside the material, your uh, inelastic scattering spreads and n number many events of inelastic scattering and then in combination with elastic, elastic scattering, it makes the electron trajectories to go around all, all over this volume. So, that is how the, this kind of uh, volume is generated. So, you may wonder how even though you start with a very small probe, you may wonder that it should be a very straight volume and because of this scattering phenomenon and, uh, and which makes this electron trajectories in all over this place in three dimension, you get this kind of an interaction volume shape. So, as I mentioned yesterday, the left hand side contours are uh, based on these experiments and the right hand side or uh, the contours based on the Monte Carlo simulations which is estimated numerically. And it is very interesting to note that the kind of energy variations from the surface to the, the bottom and, uh, and we will have some kind of uh, idea about how this inelastic scattering signals are useful 
in, uh, obta uh, in obtaining information about the materials in SEM like your secondary electron, uh, backscattered electron and the characteristic X-rays. So, we also talked about this uh, influence of beam energy on the interaction volume. This is uh, one another Monte Carlo electron trajectory simulation for the iron as a function of beam energy 10, 20 and 30 kilo electron volt. You can see that with the low kV the interaction volume is small and as the the beam energy increases you can also see that the electron trajectory is going spreading wider and wider uh, inside the material. So, you see that from this slide you can understand that the, the beam energy also controls the interaction volume of specimen and the electron beam. And another important aspect is the influence of atomic number on the interaction volume. What you are seeing is uh, a carbon and iron, you can see that the kind of uh, uh, interaction volume one can achieve um, which is predicted by this uh, simulation, numerical simulation and as the atomic number increases you can clearly see that uh, the volume increases and uh, one can appreciate that uh, the, the difference between a non-metal and a metal you can see that lateral width is spreading compared to the, the linear width that we can understand that this is because of the, the scattering cross section increases as you go with the higher atomic number which is quite obvious. And then some more examples of this uh, atomic uh, number volume and you can look at this uh, silver metal and silver L shell and then you have uranium metal and then uranium M shell and so on. So, you get some idea about this interaction volume even though you start with your uh, probe diameter which is it could be very uh, small. And it is not just uh, atomic number you have uh, some influence of the specimen surface tilt on the interaction volume. You see when you look at the um, an SEM operation which I am going to show you in few minutes the specimen is tilted to the required angle in order to collect the, the appropriate signals in large quantity. So, the specimen tilt also will have some influence on the interaction volume and hence the, uh, the outcome, the, the output I would say the, for example, it is a, a secondary electron or a backscattered electron volume which is eventually going to decide the the image quality and the resolution and so on. So, this is the as the simulation which is shown here as a schematic for a 0 degree tilt and 45 degree tilt and then 60 degree tilt. Obviously, the, more, the, the higher the tilting angle also slightly reduces the interaction volume and so on. So, before I go into the little more detail on the image formation and then interpretation. I would like you to look at the equipment now. I will now show you the one of the scanning electron microscopes we have in our lab and then I will take you to the lab and I would like to see you, I would like you to see all the components in detail and then functions so that whatever we have discussed so far from the beginning you will be able to appreciate much more clear manner. So, what you are now seeing on the screen is uh, is in a scanning electron microscope. I am going to explain to you in detail about all these features. 
and uh, and this is how the equipment appears from the front side and this is the the specimen chamber we are uh, going to open this and then tell you what it can reveal so you can have a closer look this microscope is uh, having a thermodynamic emission possibly a tungsten filament i will explain to you as we just move around so just have a look at the the equipment and this is the display screen where you are going to see the output i will just tell you this first screen and second screen what all it will show i will tell you in a minute and this the last quadrant show the equipment inside the inside the chamber what is happening that you can see and uh, and we will we will go through all this uh, components of this and here is our scholar who is going to operate this and then show you in much more detail. This is inside the chamber how the, that is how it looks like just to you first observe it and then we will explain one by one and this is how the inside the chamber and uh, the important components are there. First have a look at it we will go through one by one what are the importance of each one. So, you it is a, a long I mean low magnification you can see that the total mission is appearing like this which has uh, two monitors and this is an FEA mission model 1200 and uh, and this has got that um, EDS attachment and what now you are seeing is uh, just to opening of the chamber again and this from the side view this is from the top view and this is how the again the inside view this is the electron column uh, this is where uh, all your important electromagnetic lenses are there. So, basically this electron column has got uh, two parts one is uh, electron source this portion the top portion and the, the rest of the column you have this electromagnetic lenses and, and scanning coils everything is inside. You can have a, a close look at it. So, the scholar is explaining the total structure of this uh, equipment. So, this is a source and this is a column as I said inside the electron source you as we have seen there are various types of sources are available. What you are now seeing is the, the specimen stage from the top view this is where you can keep your samples. So, from the specimen stage you understand that at least the size which is which can fit inside this about 10 centimeter you can kind of a sample you can analyze in the SEM. And now let us get into the details and this is the a secondary electron detector uh, which is just uh, below the pole I mean side by side of the pole piece this is the back scattering BSC detector this is how it is like look like and uh, this is a pole piece and just behind this you can see that uh, your characteristic x-ray detector it is very difficult to view but uh, we will focus that you can see that tube just behind this that is a x-ray characteristic detector and then you also have this uh, EBSD detector we will uh, look at all this uh, usage of this detector and we will perform an actual experiment then you will appreciate much more. 
So, you now have some idea about what is how this inside uh, chamber will look like and, uh, and this is the chamber which I talked about which is being maintained at a very low vacuum and so now what you are now seeing is the, the typical uh, a tungsten filament which is, uh, is this is a failed one, but you can have a look at it what is the, how does it look like this is a tungsten filament just for a demonstration. So, now we will go into these uh, details of how to perform an experiment. We will take up uh, a particular material probably a metallic specimen we can take and then we will put inside and I think before that we will also explain what is involved in the control system. So, this is a sample we are going to examine and this is a, a metallic sample where you have uh, two phase. I will show you once we start examining just uh, the standard metallographic preparation which you have gone through during optical microscopy is good enough for this kind of microstructure analysis. You see this sample is placed on the stage now, it is going, it is going to get, uh, now we are fixing the backscattering detector just below the pole piece and you may wonder why the second electron is kept in an angle and uh, backscattered electron detector is fixed just below the pole piece, there is a reason for it. You see the backscattered electrons are high energy electrons as compared to secondary electrons. So, their trajectories are more, more or less straight. So, the specimen is here, then the, the, the backscattered electrons will directly come and then hit this detector on the other side. You can see that this is the region where your backscattered electron will be collected and you are going to fix this under the pole piece like this. And then, but since second electron is a low energy electron, it can just uh, trajectories can bend and get into this collector which is a Faraday cage basically. And you can also appreciate that this chamber has got lot more slots a vacant, some of the slots are vacant where we can insert any number of uh, detectors at least 2, 3 we can accommodate here, 2 more detectors similar to this can be accommodated here. And uh, so now we will try to close this chamber so that we will start our experiments. So, all this uh, the type of specimen which you are uh, looking at in SEM is also depending upon what kind of uh, vacuum it can handle. So, there are a high vacuum mode, a low vacuum mode and uh, environmental mode. We will look at it uh, and the monitoring screen, how we adjust these things and uh, now you are closing the chamber and then we will switch on the vacuum pump. So, as I mentioned in the beginning that chamber is maintained at the with the pressure of 10 to the power minus 4 to minus 5 Pascal and you can see now the sample is placed here this is the fourth quadrant monitor which also shows the, the inside configuration and what is happening inside and the first screen will display the output of a secondary electron and the second screen is uh, the output of backscattered electron 
the third screen of the quadrant combines these two SC and BSE and then it displays an output and this is how you can look at your sample how it is whether it is close to the pole piece and or not you can monitor it. So, now you can see that it has been just closed and opened and then closed again just for the clarity. So, that in this window is essential because you will not raise the specimen very close to the tip and then spoil the pole piece and so on you can avoid this uh, some of the major accidents. You can have a close look at the, the tungsten filament which we have seen. Anyway, we will now get into the analysis. So, now we will start collecting the information about the specimen and we will also go through some of the basic uh, parameters. We will go through some of the important uh, parameters which is listed on the right hand side and uh, which will give you kind of uh, signal Okay. Once the vacuum is uh, done, it will show the status with a green light. So, we are ready to go. You can see that that uh, range was in that order 10 to the power minus 5 Pascal and then you have the other controls here. As I mentioned, you have a high vacuum mode where you mostly the metallic specimens are uh, examined low low vacuum mode the the material which requires this kind of pressure can be employed then environmental sem e sem where all the biological and uh, um, biotechnology specimens can be used and then you have the pressure monitor here and then you have the electron voltage control and then you have also the spot size. So, I hope now you all know what is the meaning of the spot size and uh, high voltage you can monitor this and also you can control the, the, the display contrast and uh, brightness using these two consoles. So, now we will slowly go to the, the imaging details and how this is going to help us. So, for this particular specimen we are maintaining this 30 kilo volt and uh, let us go and uh, you can also see that uh, source of tilt from the position here. and you also will be able to monitor the filament current and uh, filament voltage and so on from this source control. Here that is the second electron output and this is a backscatter electron output. So, you see that uh, a metal matrix which is having a second phase particle of very high atomic number that is why it is you see that the kind of satellite spots here. Now, let us see how this is uh, focused. All this uh, controls are much more uh, easy because of this uh, software interface and everything is controlled by this uh, the interface software here. So, you do not really have to do any you know analog button control like the old equipments today everything is uh, computer controlled and uh, you can see that uh, the kind of information also appears in the display screen which will also come 
along with the image. The details like working distance, magnification and uh, the region and so on. So now what now you are seeing is like uh, a secondary electron image and this is a backscatter electron image. You will see how it, uh, you can see that uh, all the details you have, the date, time and uh, working distance magnification. This is uh, once this uh, the signals are coming from this uh, photo multiplier, like I showed in some of the schematic, and uh, you have everything get recorded in the digital format. And you also will have uh, another monitor to control the chemical analysis and you can see that uh, the bright spots are coming because of the higher atomic number contrast or Z contrast. What I will do is, uh, so now you are uh, going with the higher magnification, they are very simple, you can just, uh, it is a mouse click operation in this monitor and the, the magnification which you can go with this kind of uh, uh, tungsten filament up to 20K you can try, but if, you, if the source is a field emission gun then the very high magnification with higher resolution is possible. So the image formation in this SEM is entirely different mechanisms as compared to your optical or transmission electron microscopy. So we will discuss about it much more detail in the coming classes, how this image contrast appears and how can, how can it be interpreted and so on. And, uh, I will now show some more details of the yeah this is uh, we are now looking trying to looking at uh, the chemical analysis of this using energy dispersive spectrometer which I will introduce we have not talked about it much more detail as I said one of the the uses of uh, SEM is to look at the chemical composition of the constituent in the microstructure. So, this is uh, achieved by that uh, EDS spectrum which is attached to this and you also get this information uh, here on a particle of your interest and you have the variants like EDS and WDS, WDS is much more uh, powerful in terms of achieving the resolution and of course you have a great advantage with EDS as well, we will discuss those things in coming classes. So these are the experiments, one typical experiments one can perform using this uh, equipment and you can also look at the typical fracture surface. This is one of the live experiments which you are uh, conducting, it is a live video. So you can see that uh, we always uh, said that in SEM the depth of focus is very high, you are able to see the details inside this fracture surface much more clearly which is simply not possible with the optical microscopy. And you can also go to BSE mode, you can see that the difference between the SEM, the SE mode and BSE mode and which is the same region is looked at at very high magnification. So what you are now seeing is a difference between BSE and SE, you can see that the contrast is very bright in BSE mode that means you have the constituents which is having higher atomic number. 
uh, which is readily uh, revealed by this BSE mode of operation. So, I think uh, you with this uh, you would have got some idea about how this uh, microscopy is used. I will uh, stop here with this experiment. We will continue this experiment uh, for obtaining crystallographic information such as electron backscattering diffraction, electron backscattering diffraction technique which I will introduce very briefly uh, in the coming classes and then we will also perform the one of the experiments in the lab and then we will show you the live uh, video how those things are uh, interpreted and then how do you get this information from this tool. So, we will continue that in the, the coming classes. Thank you.